Hey everyone, this is John, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about controlling an LED using pulse width modulation. I'm going to show you how it's done, then I'm going to talk to you through how I did it. So let's get this show on the road. Okay, that was the show. Let's do the talk. Frequency, 254 hertz. So, each second is broken up into 254 segments. Duty cycle, 49%. Duty cycle is the percentage of time that the LED is on versus off. So right now, the duty cycle is 49%. The LED is on 49% of the segment. The LED is off 51% of the segment. You can decrease the percentage that the LED is on, and you can increase the percentage of the segment that the LED is on. When you decrease it, the LED is on for a smaller percentage of time, so the LED appears dimmer. When you increase the percentage, the duty cycle, the LED appears brighter because it's on for a greater percentage of the segment. And this is happening 254 times a second. But we can't tell it. It looks consistent. It looks like it's on because it's happening so fast. And I can control the duty cycle, the percentage of the time that the LED is on in the segment with these buttons. I can decrease it. LED looks dimmer because it's only on 6% of the time in that segment. And when I increase the duty cycle, the LED looks brighter because it's on for 99% of the time, 99% of the segment. Right now, the duty cycle, 80% and it's static. It stays at 80% through time at 254 hertz. If I change, if I press this button, the duty cycle becomes dynamic and the percentage fluctuates. It goes from low percentage to high percentage, just like this. And when it fluctuates like that, it appears that the LED is pulsing. I can change the how long it takes for one pulse to happen by changing the period. The period is one second. So from when the LED is completely dark, completely bright, and then back to completely dark, it takes one second. I can increase the period to two seconds, and it takes two seconds to go from dark to bright back to dark. I can also decrease the period, and it only takes a quarter of a second, 0.25 seconds, to go from dark to bright to dark. And that's basically pulse width modulation of this LED. Now I'm going to talk about uh, the hardware and the setup in general. I got my 9 volt battery right here coming in hot. And this 9 volt comes around here and feeds this LCD display. Makes it nice and bright and pretty for you. This 9 volts also goes through this 317L voltage regulator. And with the help of this potentiometer, it kicks the 9 volts down to 3.5 volts, which is what I'm feeding the microcontroller. Now, if you notice, the microcontroller is on the breadboard, breadboard alone. It is not on the launch pad. And when you have the microcontroller on the breadboard, you need this guy right here, this 47 kilo ohm resistor. The 47 kilo ohm resistor needs to come from the 3.5 volts, and it needs to go to the reset pin of the microcontroller. If you don't have that, then the microcontroller is just not going to work. It's 
no matter how much money you give it, no matter what you say, no matter what promises you make, the microcontroller will not function unless it has this 47 kilo ohm resistor going to its reset pin. So once we have power to the microcontroller software written, I have these six lines controlling this LCD. I have four data lines and then two data control lines. I also have these one, two, three, four, five push buttons that control the functionality of the LCD and the LED. It controls the pulse width, the modulation, the duty cycle, uh, the frequency. And these little capacitors here are for um, to prevent to prevent debouncing of these buttons, so you don't get funky signals. This potentiometer right here controls the brightness of the LCD, and we have the star of the show right here, our LED, which is flashing a uh, little diva there. And the last thing I'm going to talk about here is probably the most important. This is a tuning fork or an external oscillator. The microcontroller uh, itself has two internal oscillators, the DCO, the digitally controlled oscillator, and the LFO, the low frequency, low power oscillator. Now these oscillators will be fine to use, but they're not extremely accurate. Um, when I've used them before, uh, every time I, I turn it on and turn it off, it comes with a different frequency and uh, it, the frequency could also change from microcontroller to microcontroller. And that's fine. It's part of the spec. It's what you um, expect when you use it. But I wanted something more consistent, more accurate. So I chose to use this tuning fork, this external oscillator. And what that does is that it vibrates at 32,768 times in a second. And it's consistent. It's, it's high accuracy. So that when... I say 254 hertz, it is 254 hertz. When I say 127 hertz, it is 127 hertz because I'm using this uh, precise external oscillator. So to wrap up, that's the oscillator. This is the LED. That was pulse width modulation. That was the video. I'm John. Hope you liked it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll do the best I can. Have a good one.